Hey there, it's Jeff, and we're back with another video on Spike. This time we're going to talk a little bit about um, digging a bit deeper into the configuration, and we're going to load some remote data into the templates just so that you can see uh, how that interaction goes. Um, so, if you checked out the last video, you'll remember we made this really impressive, uh, fantastic site here that says hi there in red. Um, I'm going to just be using that same code base here um, and, and working with that as we go. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is scroll down past the placeholder where this video will go and uh, see what we have available as far as resources. And so the first thing I'm going to check out is the plugin directory. Um, and this is a good place to find some plugins that uh, will enhance Spike's functionality. And there are a bunch of these. Uh, there are actually a couple more that I need to load in here. Um, but the one that we're after here is, is being able to compile remote data into our templates. Uh, so Spike records is what we're looking for. Um, I've got some data over here that is just from my company's API, and it's just a list of all the staff. Um, and I usually just use this as a simple example because um, it's pretty straightforward, and you can kind of like make a little staff list. So uh, I'm going to try to take this and pull it in from that URL and make it available in our templates. So I'm going to check out Spike Records for the purposes of doing that. And Spike Records is a very commonly used plugin, um, and it pulls in a pretty good different array of types of data. Um, like it says here, it can pull in a regular object, um, it can pull a file, it can pull a JSON API URL, it can pull a GraphQL endpoint. Um, basically, it can it can run anything. It's just matter. I mean, we could make it consume XML as well, but <laughs> we just haven't had a need for that yet. Um, this is kind of like the catch-all, like get some data into your templates kind of plug it. Um, and so let's look at exactly how this works. Um, so basically it looks like we require it uh, into our configuration and then we make this locals object here which starts as an empty object and we pass that on to um, our reshape options. Um, and reshape is the engine that processes our HTML and we'll talk about it just a little bit as we get more into this. Um, and then we add to the plugins, we add this records plugin, again, pass this locals object so that they both have access to them. Um, and then here there's some syntax for actually including the data source. Um, so here's another pretty good example of all different kinds of data sources. Here's a file, here's a URL, um, and that looks similar to what we're using here. Um, and here's some raw data, and then here's a GraphQL query. So we should be able to use this to get up and running. So uh, let's get back into the project and see if we can make it happen. Um, so here's our project, and this is the configuration. Um, what I'm going to do is stop this watcher, and I'm going to install Spike Records. Um, and we'll save that. Okay, so while that's installing, let's get it configured here. So we know we need to have it up here, and it's, since it's a class, I will capitalize it. Okay, and then we also need a locals object. Here's this empty object, and in here I've got this uh, page ID plugin that essentially will put a ID in the body for the page, but I don't really need it for this example, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, and then I have this like example foobar local just to show how they go in. But I'm just going to drop this out, and instead we'll just pass in the locals here for this function. Um, and then we just need to add a plugins key, and we'll just initialize this guy here, and run add data to. That's going to take locals, and then finally we need our uh, actual source, which is going to be on the left, the name of what we want it to be named inside of our template, and on the right, like right, whether it's a file URL or data, um, etc. So let's call this uh, staff, and then we'll just use a URL here, and uh, we'll go grab the URL from here, and just paste it right in. That should do the trick. Okay, and yeah, let's get rid of page ID as well, because um, I didn't really need that for this particular Okay, so first of all, I just want to see if this data actually made it into my template at all. So what I'm going to do is just put an expression in here, um, and 
I'm going to use three so that it doesn't escape HTML, and then I'm going to run JSON stringify, and I'll say stuff. Okay. Um, we'll dig a little bit more into this syntax in just a moment. I just want to show this work. Okay, so we got records added, and now we're just going to run spike watch, um, or I'll use npm start for this one. I feel like it's a little more canonical. Um, so that should, in just a moment, give us a fresh new tab with this data in there. And, uh, well, hopefully. Yep, there it is. Okay, so it's all red. Um, but we have all of the full data, and we can kind of uh, iterate through this and see how it looks. However, if you noticed, um, it's got this kind of like wrapper, uh, like response wrapper up here. I don't really want that uh, right now. I kind of just want the content. Um, so. I also don't really want to have to go through uh, this thing every time. I would rather just get the content straight off the bat. So I'm going to try to add a little bit of an extra feature here. Um, if you go down to additional options, you can see that there's a feature called transform, uh, which allows you to basically put a function here, um, and it will take back the response that you get, and you can make some kind of transformation to it, and then pass it back before it goes into reviews. Um, so I'm going to utilize that function in order to simplify our data just a little bit in the configuration. Um, so here's the plugin, and under staff, I'm going to just space this out, and we'll add a transform function, and this will just be uh, dot content. That should get us back what we need. And so now that I've changed the base config, I'm going to restart the watcher. Um, and that should get us to a good spot. While I'm at it, I'm also going to remove the, uh, <laughs> the red coloring on this text um, because it's a little bit annoying. Okay, um, so that looks pretty good. Now we've just got this array here. Uh, so the next question is how do we iterate through this array? And while I could just show you um, what the syntax is for just doing it, I kind of want to go through the process of how to discover this um, on your own through the documentation for um, all of these pieces of the project because it kind of gives a good opportunity to explore how this is working rather than just presenting you a uh, magical solution. So um, as you may have heard before when I said it, um, <laughs> the reshape is the engine that is processing the HTML here. Post CSS is what's processing our CSS and of course Babel is what's processing our JavaScript. Each of these three act in exactly the same way. That is, they don't do anything out of the box. They just are pure parsers. So reshapes an HTML parser, post CSS is a CSS parser, and Babel is a JavaScript parser. The way that you get them to actually do things for you is you add plugins to the parsers. So for example, in Babel, there are a large set of plugins that do transforms that take ES6 syntax and make them compatible with ES5. In post CSS, there's a popular plugin called Auto Prefixer, which you may have used before, and that takes um, modern CSS syntax and it adds browser prefixes so that it works in older browsers and you don't have to do it manually. Uh, Reshape, you can do the same type of thing for HTML. So you can take the full HTML tree and transform it in any way that you want. And so we've used this to make a few different plugins that make life kind of convenient. First of all, we have this parser uh, called SugarML, which gives it this white space-based syntax. You don't have to use the parser. The only thing it does is does the white space stuff. So if you get rid of the parser, you still keep all of the features. Another thing you can see here is that we have a layout engine that uses blocks here, named blocks, very, very much like Pug or Jade. Um, and so that's really helpful in putting your pages together. So you can see that there's a content block here under the main element. Uh, and then here we have an extends layout that links us back to there, and then it overrides that block. Um, so there are a bunch of other interesting features here, which we'll check out in a minute, that you can use through Reshape plugin. But it should be noted that these standards blocks right here are nothing magical. They're just collections of plugins. If you've used Babel before, which most people have, you probably know that there are presets for Babel, like there's a ES6 preset, uh, that used to be called ES2015, now it's called Babel Preset End. Um, and that's just a collection of plugins that you slot in. So 
this is exactly the same thing. The HTML standards, CSS standards, and JS standards are just collections of plugins that we kind of provide out of the box to make life easy so you don't have a big long configuration uh, and you have a bunch of plugins that are for really useful features. However, you definitely don't need to use all of them. You can remove some, you can add extra ones. It's very customizable in this way. Um, so I just wanted to explain what's actually going on here uh, before we start reading into it. So in order to find out how this is working and how to get through the loop syntax, I need to go find out what HTML standards is because I need a plugin for reshape that will let me loop through some data. So I know from this reference right here that it's actually a library called reshape standard. And so I pulled that up in a tab so we could check it out. Um, and so here's an example of a bunch of different features from reshape standard. Um, and you can see kind of like a lot of the syntax here we've got includes. This is probably what we're after right here, actually, this each loop, there's conditionals. These are the expressions that we already saw. Uh, you can do markdown, there's all sorts of good stuff. Um, and this, like I said before, is just a pack of plugins. And so it lists right here what plugins are included as part of this. Um, and so reshape expressions is actually the specific plugin that adds this loop functionality. And so you can see that here in the title. So if you go in here, this is the specific documentation for how to do all these things. So it shows how to use locals here, which we just saw with these two brackets. Um, it shows how to use unescape locals with a three right here, like you can see. Um, otherwise, it kind of does some HTML escaping, which uh, prevents security holes. Um, it's got expressions here. We've got conditionals. And then down here, we've got loops. So this is drilling all the way down to the specific documentation for this feature. I just wanted to show it so it's not just total magic. Um, anyway, so uh, we know what we can do is, is run this custom each tag, and this will get transformed into our output in the end. Uh, and you can use item and an optional index of an array. So let's go back into our template, and we'll set this up to loop through our array and list the names of all of the staff uh, from here, and we can do that just using the name parameter. Okay, <laughs> I know that was a little bit of a detour, but um, I think it helps to really understand what's going on. Okay, so let's just put a headline and say uh, pirate staff, and we'll make a list, and inside that list we'll do each loop equals, uh, well, we'll do employee of staff. Okay, cool. Um, so now inside of there, we'll do this list item, and then we can just do employee.name. Okay, and we'll get rid of that lump output and save it. Okay, back at our wonderful site, which I now have two tabs open for, you'll see that now we have actually listed out a list item for each of the first few names in our staff, which is exciting. Um, so, that's basically how you go through and pull remote data into your templates. Now this will work for any type of remote data source, and Spike is built very specifically to be really good at integrating this remote data uh, because we use it for a lot of our stuff here at my employer. Um, so if you have any doubts about any type of external integrations, uh, you should quell those doubts because there certainly is something there for you. Uh, a very common integration is integrating with a headless CMS so that your clients have the ability to change the data on your website whenever they need to. Um, so if you need to do that, you can always go and check out the plugin directory. There are a few different specific CMSs that we have integrations for, like WordPress Contentful, uh, Rooftop, there's one for Datto CMS as well. And also, if it has a JSON API or even a GraphQL API, you can still just run it straight through Spike Records and, and pull that data in without issue. So I hope that this was helpful, and we'll be back in another video to dig into some more advanced features of Spike.